Can you find a light bulb that looks like your old 60 watt soft white incandescent bulb? Of course. But you have to know the 21st century numbers. I'm Doug Walker and this is Roominess. Today we're going to talk about light bulbs and how you get the same pleasant look that incandescent bulbs used to give your space. If you have questions or thoughts you'd like to share about light bulbs, drop me a line in the comments below. And to get more bite-sized interior decor advice from my channel, hit the subscribe button. There are four basic light bulb types for typical indoor residential fixtures. Those are incandescent bulbs, LED bulbs, halogen bulbs, and compact fluorescent lights, or CFLs. Let's start with a lamp that's just on or off, meaning there's no dimmer. You can find a 60 watt incandescent bulb replacement in any of the other three types pretty easily. But just because the box says it's a 60 watt replacement is not enough. Your living room can still end up looking like a dentist's office that way. There are actually three numbers you need to know, and one doesn't count in decor. Lumens are a measure of the brightness of a light. It tells how bright the bulb will appear to your eye. In olden days, bulb wattage gave us generally what we needed to know about lumens. 40 was dim, 60 was pleasant, and 75 to 100 was bright. When a new bulb says that it's a 60 watt equivalent, it typically means that the lumens are equivalent to a 60 watt incandescent bulb. Here are some general lumen comparisons for traditional incandescent bulbs. A 25 watt bulb gave off about 200 lumens. A 40 watt, 400 lumens. 60 watt bulbs gave off about 750 to 800 lumens. 75 watt bulbs, 900 lumens. And 100 watt bulbs, round about 1150 lumens. The second number you need to know measures what's called the temperature of the light. This number is the one that gives people fits, even some designers. The temperature of the light truly measures the quality of the light, and whether your light bulb gives off a warm glow or if it's a cold, sterile spotlight. Quite paradoxically, a warm glow is a lower temperature light, and a cold spotlight is a hotter temperature. Lighting manufacturers have inconveniently decided to represent this quality using degrees Kelvin. What on earth is that? Degrees Kelvin is a temperature scale. One unit degree Kelvin is the same as one unit degree Celsius. However, zero degrees Kelvin is defined as absolute zero, a hypothetical temperature where all molecular movement stops. Zero degrees Kelvin is equivalent to Fahrenheit 460 degrees below zero. The color or quality of light is measured using degrees Kelvin because of, well, iron. Not again. As pure iron or a similar black body object is heated from 300 degrees Kelvin up to 6500 degrees Kelvin, it emits light that passes through red, orange, yellow, white, and eventually bluish white. The chromaticity of light emitted from non-incandescent light bulbs is defined using the correlated color temperature, or CCT, relating it back to iron. This is all magnificent for lighting manufacturers and professional lighting designers, but our problem as decorators and homeowners is what number am I looking for on the light bulb box? You typically do not want to imitate daylight with your light bulbs, as tempting as it sounds. Sunlight can be between 5500 and 6500 Kelvin. You may hear 5600 Kelvin referred to as daylight standard when talking about photography or videography. Candlelight, the original cultural reference point for indoor lighting, is only about 1850 Kelvin. The yesteryear incandescent 60 watt bulbs were about 2700 Kelvin. So for nearly all the bulbs in my house, I'm aiming for a color temperature between 2700 Kelvin and 2900 Kelvin. Let's go back to our table. For all the uses and brightness values, I recommend the same color temperature rating between 2700 and 2900 Kelvin. If you use this as a guide, your rooms will closely reflect what they look like with incandescent bulbs. Now some people prefer more white and less golden glow for their lights. This can work well, especially with contemporary and minimalist design approaches. You may want to experiment with what color temperature you feel comfortable with, but I imagine most people would prefer a color temperature not much more than 3800 or 4000 Kelvin. 
I've added that as the last column in the table. The third number that defines your light bulbs is watts. If you buy a bulb with a lower wattage rating, you will use less power. I'm going to leave it to you to decide the best kind of bulb to get based on initial cost, operating cost, and life expectancy. Because for the context of this web series, I don't care. I just want an attractive light and an attractive space. Here are some shopping tips for light bulbs. Lighting manufacturers are beginning to show you all the information we talked about on their packaging. In this example, the brightness is noted as 800 lumens. The light appearance shows on a scale at the bottom. You can see I'm all the way on the warm end of the scale. If you have a specialty fixture, like a pendant that takes a smaller bulb, save the box for the bulb that you end up using. When you go shopping the next time, take the box with you so you know what to buy. Or, if you don't keep the box, take the burnt out bulb with you when you go shopping for its replacement. Here are some other tips. Compact fluorescent lights, or CFLs, sometimes take a minute to warm up and get to their rated lumens and color temperature. If you prefer not to wait, you may want to stick with LED or halogen bulbs. Some people have concerns about mercury in CFL bulbs. It is true that CFLs contain mercury. It's about 1% of what was in a standard household thermometer. Both LED and halogen bulbs are mercury free. So, is that it? That's it? One more thing. If you plan to use dimmers for your fixtures, you need to check the compatibility of your dimmers to your bulbs. A dimmer made for incandescent bulbs can only work with incandescent bulbs or replacement halogen bulbs. Even if you have a dimmer for LED and CFL bulbs, you need to make sure to buy bulbs that are marked dimmable. There are universal dimmers that can be used with all four types of bulbs. However, CFLs and LEDs must still be marked dimmable. Make sure to consult your dimmer manufacturer's website for compatibility. If you are confused at all regarding dimmer compatibility or installation or operation, please consult an electrician. If you'd like to hear more about interior decor and less about electricity, hit the subscribe button. Leave me your questions in the comments below. You can get on my email list at RuminusTV.com. Thanks for watching. When creating videos that discuss light bulbs, all YouTube users are required to include a clip in which the speaker inserts a light bulb into his or her mouth. Said light bulb must light up in the speaker's mouth. If you have questions regarding this requirement or implementation, please contact Industrial Light and Magic. You've got to be kidding!